Well, good Monday morning. The sun has finally come out. We are coming to you from our latest boondocking location at Isabel Pass, which is mile 197 of the Richardson Highway. And this location in the winter time in April here in Alaska is amazing because it is home to the Arctic Man Challenge. The Arctic Man Challenge has over 10,000 snow machines come up here and they party hard for, I think it's a weekend, and there's many activities and all this lower valley here where we're parked and all the way over on this side of the valley becomes an RV city. Over a thousand RVs, I believe, come in and they watch a very crazy competition of combination skiing and snowmobiling. Uh, I'm gonna have Gary talk more about it because he's been watching more footage than I have. But this has been our home. It has rained for the last two days straight, so it's nice to finally have the sunshine come out. So here in Alaska, fireweed is like their state flower. And this is fireweed right here, this purple plant. And this is a prime example of the natural calendar it provides. As you can see, it's had blooms way down here and it progresses as the summer comes. And according to this plant, we still have a little bit more summer before winter hits. Oh, here comes Gary. Maybe I can get him to talk about what Arctic Man a little bit more. Spirit! Spirit, are you a happy girl off leash? Yeah, no leash laws here. Wow, beautiful out here today. Isn't it? Gosh, such a far cry from what yes, two days of rain. I forgot what the sunshine looked like. Yeah, we've had two days of rain here. Forgot it's what been the glacier looked like. Miserable. Couldn't see the mountains at all except the termination dust and the low lying hills. And uh, actually, Which has gotten some of that receded. Now those hills over there, that ridge line was covered yesterday. But up there, it looks like it's. There's probably more thicker. snow up there. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, we're at Isabel Pass. Uh, off the Richardson Highway, just, uh, I think it's just north of the Summit Lake area and about, what, 30 miles north of Paxton? Or about, Paxson? About that. Yeah. Um, Mile 197 of the point, Richardson. Well, 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.7, depending on which way you're coming down. Yeah. Or going up. If you see the monument, turn. Yes. Uh, anyway, this is a very uh, popular recreation area in the spring, uh, in April. They have an event that's held here, I think it's been going on for 30 plus years now, called Arctic Man. Uh, last year they had 13,000 people here, not participants necessarily, but 13,000 people, over a thousand RVs. Um, Wasn't it 13,000 sleds? Maybe something like that. Snowmobiles, sleds, snowmobiles. Snow, snow machines, machines is what they call them snow up machines, here. Snow uh, machines, iron dogs. All that good stuff. Uh, it, it's a huge gathering of, of snow machines in, in April. And there's also an extre extreme ski slash snowmobile event or, or challenge that, that people do. And it brings Olympic skiers here. Olympic skiers and world class snowmobilers. And this is, this is one of the most famous spots or one of the most popular spots in Alaska anyway for snowmobiling because it's so open. There's some great hills and just the train here is really awesome. I can see it. I mean, just, yeah, these hills are just beautiful to snowmobile. I don't know exactly where the course is, but I know they start somewhere up in the mountains, about 8,500 feet high. And I'm thinking what they do is they ski down, like from the peak over there, they, there's a narrow valley that runs down that into the valley over here. And then once they get down to a certain area, the snowmobile will hand the skier a ski, a, rope. A ski rope, a tow rope. <laughs> and 
you know, they they hand off the ski, and the, and the skiers on skis hand this tow rope, and the snowmobile takes off, and they hit speeds almost 90 miles an hour going across this flat section and sliding uphill to another uh, peak. They climb the peak being towed by the snowmobile. Because there's no chairlift here. Because there's no chairlift, yeah. And then they ski down the other side. It's uh, five miles or so in three and a half minutes. Wow. Yeah. These guys are reaching 90 miles an hour on skis. That's it's freaking insane, but it sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. So Google Arctic Man if you would like to see what this place looks yeah. like in the winter. Well, we still don't know what we're doing today. We don't know if we're going, if we're staying, gonna be if like we're going to go I to think, Tangle Lake. I think we're going to explore a little bit today. So I guess you'll find out what we're going to do when we do. All and right, guys, I'm going to go get my coffee. And I think Gary's on a photo expedition. Well, no, I can only take so many pictures of the same thing. <laughs> uh, I've taken a lot of pictures of this area, and you know, I want to take pictures over there, but the sun's not shining right right now. No. I need the sun behind me because that's just gonna be a blacked out shot. I'll tell you one thing though, you can tell the fall colors here every day. Oh gosh. Yes. It's getting redder. Um, more red. More red. More yellow. More. Orange. It's changing by the hour and it's amazing to watch. Yeah. Well, we've gone up the road from camp a little bit to explore and we came across this old abandoned mine operation. And it looks like it's an old sluice box. Pretty cool. Well, that didn't work, so we've tied Spirit up to the post while Gary and I explore the bridge. And Sophie. Bouncy, bouncy! Wow. That's a bouncy bridge. Here we are, getting close to the end. Oh. Bounty. Kind of gives you an idea how long it is, too. You know, I'm scared of heights, too, right? Right? And what do you just do? You cross that suspension bridge. It gets a little hairy on Right there in the middle, it kind of does. On this side, because it's yeah. tilting a little bit. It tilts the other way. It's like on the, on the far side, it's it's tilting one way, then in the middle it starts tilting the other way. I'm glad we had two cameras, because there's no way I'm filming as I walk across that. Uh, yeah, you have to hold on with one hand. It's more difficult. My heart is beating. <laughs> I think Sophie's too. We had to leave Spirit back on the other side, because she just... She doesn't do heights and bridges and stuff. She's a scary cat. Yeah. Gary just left to explore a little bit on the other side of the bridge. Uh, we're not comfortable leaving Spirit behind even though she's over there. I'm keeping post, watching spirits and, uh, while Gary explores. And then we're gonna head back across and go for a truck hike. Back across! Looks like Sophie's falling down a little bit further than she should be. <laughs>
there comes a point where you say, screw it, I just want to get across. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bridge. I don't like it. Yeah. And then there's the scary cat. She's like, I'm ashamed. Here, what do you think? How's that bridge? Well, that truly was fun. A little scary, but well worth the little hike back up here. Oh yeah, that was really kind of a full bridge. I, I enjoyed it. That's fun. I went up uh, on the, I don't know, see, yeah, up on the top of that hill, like right over in, in there. Let's see if I could get any closer views of the glacier, but uh, the brush is so dang tall, I couldn't really see much, so I tried. And Stacy was waiting back at the bridge, and I didn't want her to worry too much and have to wait too long. Because I was worried about the dog. Well, that and bears. bears. <laughs> There's a few of those we've seen some scatter around, so they're here. All right, truck hike. Let's head back to the truck. All right. Gary, Stacy, Spirit, and Sophie. We're taking our motor home around the country. Who out north?